You might assume that a simple invention like the bicycle would have a straightforward history. However, it turns out that the history of this enormously well-liked creation is rife with misunderstandings and dispute. Over the course of a century, the two-wheeler changed and significantly improved thanks to numerous inventors. The very first bicycles were nothing like the ones you see cruising down the street today, despite the fact that stories regarding who invented the bicycle frequently conflict with one another. Welcome to the channel, let's get ready to dive into the roots of Amazon. Who was the bicycle's inventor? The solution is a little trickier than you may imagine. The first significant advancement was accomplished in 1817 by a German baron by the name of Karl von Drees, who invented a steerable two-wheeled machine. This early creation, also known as the Velocipede, Hobby Horse, Drezine, and Running Machine, has earned Drees widespread recognition as the creator of the bicycle. But it was the work of numerous other innovators that led to the development of the bicycle as we know it today in the 19th century. Even though Dre's Velocipede only had a brief period of popularity before going out of style, poet John Keats mocked it as the nothing of the day. His original design was nonetheless improved upon throughout Europe. With the invention of a wooden contraction with two steel wheels, pedals, and a fixed gear system in the early 1860s, bicycles made a reappearance. The brave users of this primitive device, often known as a bone shaker or a Velocipede, were in for a rough ride. The high wheeler, sometimes referred to as the penny farthing because of the size of the wheels, was one of the most well-liked designs. A penny farthing's tall spokes and solid rubber tires gave it a smoother ascent than its predecessor. Manufacturers began enlarging front wheels as they recognized that the farthest one could go with a pedal turn, the larger the wheel. Bicycles were formerly a pretty pricey hobby, but mass production transformed them into a useful purchase for the working man, who could then ride to and from work. The bicycle gave thousands of people a means of independent and private mobility, as well as more leisure time freedom. As more and more women began to ride, drastic adjustments in women's attire were needed. Bluners were in instead of bustles and corsets, because they allowed women to move more freely while yet keeping their legs covered by long skirts. According to the NMAH, the number of bicycles in use increased dramatically from an estimated 200,000 in 1889 to 1 million in 1899. Additionally, bicycles contributed to improved road conditions. According to the NMAH, as more Americans started riding bicycles, which required a smoother road surface than a horse-drawn vehicle, cyclists banded together to demand improved roads. Railroad companies who wished to enhance the linkages between farmers and other industries and the rail station frequently joined them. According to the NMAH, the bicycle had a direct impact on the development of the automobile. Later, bicycle components such as ball bearings, differentials, steel tube, and pneumatic tires were incorporated into vehicle components. Many early automakers, such as Charles Duria, Alexander Winton, and Albert A. Pope, began as bicycle manufacturers. In addition, Orville and Wilbur Wright made bicycles before focusing on aerodynamics. Another forerunner in aviation, Glenn Curtis, began his career making bicycles. But when cars became more common, interest in bicycles declined. Additionally, the NMAH claims that the side routes that were initially built for bicycle use were replaced with electric trains. Early in the 20th century, there were fewer producers, and for more than 50 years, kids were the main users of bicycles. The late 1960s saw a revival of adult interest, as more people started to realize that cycling was a non-polluting, non-congested mode of transportation and recreation. According to the NMAH, cycling was the most popular outdoor activity in the country in 1970, with over 5 million bicycles produced there and an estimated 75 million riders sharing 50 million bicycles. Cycling is a terrific way to travel, experience the outdoors, and maintain your fitness. Biking is a fun and practical way to get around. Whether you're a serious cyclist or just a casual rider, biking is a fantastic alternative to driving because it is inexpensive and minimal maintenance. Additionally, since more infrastructure that is bike-friendly is being developed on a daily basis, biking is rising in popularity as a mode of transportation. So get on your bike, discover your surroundings, and take pleasure in the journey. Thanks for watching. Follow for more.